سهام فقدك يا عبد الله من اللي غايب هدا يا ابن الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد لا متي ولا ميتين وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نبض وإياك نستعين اذن نصت المستقيم صرت الذين انعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا طالين امين for praise is due to allah lord of the worlds the beneficent the merciful the owner of the day of judgment the alone we worship and the alone we ask for help show us the straight path the path of those whom thou hast favored not the path of those who in thine anger nor of those who go astray verily all praise is due to allah whose description cannot be described whose uh, blessings cannot be reckoned and whose peak of understanding cannot reach he is the creator of the heavens and the earth and all in between the majestic the omniscient and the omnipotent all praise and gratitude is to him alone nothing can be compared to him and he is the most merciful and compassionate o oh allah send my sincere salutations and greetings to muhammad his alal bayt the imams and the mahdi's and please allow us to be devout muslims inshallah uh, my topic uh, is entitled uh, knowing our beloved imam our beloved imam imam ali alayhi salam uh, when i was asked to uh, say some words about imam ali alayhi salam for this occasion i found it very difficult to find the appropriate words or topic to present uh, not because there is little to say about our imam but because uh, i do not know how to say it i do not feel uh, adequate to the task I do not feel that I truly know our Imam, but rather that I only know a few surface details, some scattered facts, some historical events, some sayings of his uh, dispersed bits of knowledge. And I do not feel satisfied that merely estimating and relating a few facts is to know the Imam. It is to know about the Imam, but. this is not more than a surface knowing and this is a real difficulty faced by all who wish to truly know him but the imam knows this difficulty and he says in the hadith that to know him to know his nature his soul his spirit 
we must discern and travel the Sarat al Mustaqim, the straight path. On the sixth Imam, Imam Jafar al Sadiq al Islam makes an extraordinary statement concerning the Imams. He says about Imam Ali al Islam and all the Imams that the Imams are the straight path. He says that uh, we are the Sarat al Mustaqim. Now we can uh, respond to such a declaration in several ways. We can decry it, saying that uh, it is too much, it goes too far, uh, it is a gross uh, exaggeration. Or we can uh, accept it on blind faith, saying it is from the Imams, uh, so we must simply take it and believe it. And then not give it much uh, more thought, but uh, simply file it away as uh, interesting information. So, but we have to understand that uh, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, cautions against such an attitude. He said that uh, time will come when hearing the name of the man who speaks with knowledge, in other words, praising the man, will be considered better than actually hearing the knowledge he speaks. And hearing the knowledge will be considered better than doing the thing yourself. So, uh, what we are left with? If we praise a man, we admit to his high level of knowledge and that recognition indicates some uh, iota of awareness in us. Uh, but it does not allow us to know that man. If we listen to him and study what he teaches us and uh, remember it, then uh, we can see that we've begun to uh, approach knowledge of him. Uh, but we do not truly know him. If we acquire and uh, comprehend that knowledge which uh, he gives us and uh, make it a part of our, our part of oneself uh, and uh, act upon it and walk the path he walks, uh, not in blind imitation but with understanding, uh, then we can say that we are truly, that we truly know something of the substance of that man. Now the Imam has uh, identified himself with the straight path. So to know him, we have to first recognize that path. Then we have to gain knowledge of that path. And finally, we have to comprehend that knowledge and walk that path. Not in imitation, but with understanding. The explanation uh, and guide to this path is the Quran. It unveils the necessity, uh, the details, the difficulty, the beauty and the grace of this path. It describes the fruits of following this path. It says on uh, those who follow the straight path, he Allah increases them in guidance and brings them to taqwa, awareness of God. The Quran describes how Allah raises in stages those who follow this path. They rise in degree from ilm al yaqeen certainty in knowledge, to ayn al yaqeen certainly through vision, through experience. To Haq al yaqeen absolute certainty of the truth, the reality which underlies existence. At that point, the person contemplates with direct perception the realities that were previously understood through words, symbols, and reflections. This is the stage Imam Ali al Islam alluded to when he said, If the veil were lifted, I would not be more certain. There is an amazing verse in the Quran that says, I put my trust in Allah, my God, my Lord and your Lord. There is not a moving creature, but he has grasp of its forelock. Verily, it is my Lord that is on the straight path. There is a group of people that has reached a stage where all personal movement is renounced. Their souls, their nafs or souls are free of the distractions, cravings and desires of one who is bound and attached to this world and its attractions and uh, allurements. They simply put their trust of one who is, uh, they put their trust completely and entirely in God and the uh, movements of their ego vanish. The image is of a stone which never stirs of its own accord. This person is a pebble in the hand of God. They are therefore carried and their perpetual 
invocation is la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah there is no strength and no power save through god they give their total being over to god who takes them totally in charge they are not those who wander distracted and aimless through their lives or who are driven by compulsions of the ego or who are even uh, driven by myriad fears or by the compulsion of society or by the compulsion of the appetites and desires or even by the compulsion for power and control moving blindly step by step under the illusion of progress under the illusion that they are walking of their own preference rather they are those who give themselves entirely over to Allah and Allah pulls them towards him he draws them along his straight path and it is said that his single attraction from Allah outbalances all the effects of jinn and men so the straight path leads to many degrees many levels many marvels it is a path that is ihsan full of beauty and grace a path described with power and eloquence in the Quran now each human being each human soul is on a journey to a destination the hereafter so every soul is in some respect on a path to the other world and may also be said to itself be a path to the other world so men's souls are paths to the hereafter some go haltingly some slowly some speedily some are direct some wandering and some straight the most perfect of these straight paths is the soul of the prophet muhammad peace upon him and of ali al-islam if you take them as an example the straight path will be clarified for us and as we walk the sirat al-mustaqim and become acquainted with its beauties and marvels we will begin to truly know our imam rather than simply knowing about him however many of uh, forgetful or unaware of the great sacrifice of imam ali al-islam well let's first uh, understand sacrifice the term sacrifice is defined as the act of giving up something or valued for the sake of something else is regarded as more important or worthy the sacrifices made by those who embrace islam are crucial in the rise of our faith and its con- continuation to this very day the degrees of sacrifices may vary from one person to another depending on the status level of faith and their own abilities it is no surprise that the people who uh, sacrifice the most for islam are the holy prophet and his pure household peace upon them as their followers it is mandatory to study the different sacrifices they made if we are to truly follow in their paths imam ali al-islam said is one of these rose models whose sacrifices are innumerable so it is important not to just uh, restrict our discussion only to what sacrifices imam ali made but to also focus on the motive or the reason or the whole picture behind the sacrifice and also the tools to that ensure the sacrifice was impactful by examining the different sacrifices of Imam Ali al-Islam we realize some of the common themes that motivated his actions these include pleasing Allah protecting the religion protecting Allah's representative and improving the Islamic community's welfare to begin with the the most common form of sacrifice is giving up one's own life at the early stages of Islam that his believers wanted to destroy the religion they tortured and killed and even banished those who followed Islam eventually Allah gave the permission for jihad and it is at that moment and that point in time that all muslims had the chance to make the greatest sacrifice battle after battle war after war the muslims marched and imam ali al-islam was the first in line for the battle in every battle he never ran away he never backed down even when the warrior equated to a thousand men amar ibn abd awad 
joined the battle of the trench, Imam Ali Aslam was the only person to respond to his challenge, while many of the companions of the Prophet sat there idly. Imam Ali Aslam risked his life to protect the image of Islam. While the Imam was not martyred in those battles, the fact that he cared less about his own life and was willing to give it up is alone a major sacrifice in itself. How many of us today are willing to uh, stand in the front line of war with the enemy uh, for the sake of Islam? So protecting Islam further than uh, just raising the flag of the religion is more important. So Allah SWT sent us his uh, representatives to help spread the teachings of the religion. Many of the believers had to migrate from Mecca to Medina at the very beginning of Islam. This alone was a major sacrifice. Leaving everything behind when the Prophet wanted to migrate, Imam Ali made one of the glorious sacrifices in the history of Islam. He slept in the bed of the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him knowing that the disbelievers of Quraysh were determined to kill the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him. When the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him asked the Imam Ali if he was ready to take on that role, what was the reply? The reply, brothers and sisters, was, And will you, O Prophet, be safe? SubhanAllah, he only wanted the Prophet to be safe. He didn't have no regard for himself. This is the sacrifice. This is the main, main reason behind everything for Islam. The Imam's sacrifices continued and went beyond sacrificing his life. Despite it being the highest form of sacrifice, he sacrificed his wealth for the poor. He sacrificed his rest of his like he sacri sacrificed his rest for his people. He gave everything he was able to give in the way of Allah. He did all that to help the Islamic community. And we are we are we truly following in his footsteps? Are we sacrificing our wealth for a big cause? Are we sacrificing our time for a bigger cause? The Imam al Islam did all of that. And he has set the example, the barrier, the touchstone in how to do it. Allah SWT has engraved the status of Imam Ali in the Quran when he revealed on the right night of Hijrah and of the people is he who sells himself seeking means to the approval of Allah. So by closely examining the aforementioned sacrifices there are some attributes that help make each sacrifice solid and they include faith, devotion, obedience, strength, patience and wisdom. It is through the combination of these attributes that each sacrifice will fulfill its desired impact. Obviously a true Muslim and a follower of al albayt will combine these attributes. It is only a matter of uh, researching the maximum depicted by al albayt peace upon them. So having examined some of the sacrifices made by Imam Ali al Islam, there remains one major sacrifice that may be considered the hardest of them all. This sacrifice might very well destroy any human being and it takes someone like Imam Ali to be able to handle it in order for this sacrifice to be complete. This sacrifice is his position after the death of the Prophet. In his own words, he said, I found that endurance thereon was wiser, so I adopted patience, although there was pricking in the eye and suffocation of the throat. I watched the plundering of my inheritance. Furthermore, history narrates the subsequent attack on the house of Imam Ali and the oppression that came about upon him and his family, especially his wife, Fatima the Zahra Salam Aleha, which human being can handle his rights usurped right before his own very eyes, his wife beaten, his house attacked and burnt, which human can be left as an outcast in a city he helped build with his own very hands. Only Allah subhanahu wa knows what Imam Ali al went through and he did it for the sake of Allah. He did it in obedience 
to the will of the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him. He did it to protect the Quran. He did it to protect the Adhan, the call to prayer, so that he reaches us safely. So if we claim that we follow him, we have to first and foremost learn from him. Then we should strive to make sacrifices to please Allah and to protect his representatives. Not long ago the Prophet's legacy was attacked. What sacrifice have we made? Just recently the crown was threatened and uh, insulted. What sacrifice have we made? Our Imam, may Allah hasten his appearance, inshallah, is coming. What sacrifice have we made for his awaited return? We have to understand that the sacrifices of Imam Ali have inspired many. And we know Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim struck Imam Ali on the 19th of Ramadan. Look at, look at the elevation of Imam Ali tonight. He was struck during the blessed night of Ramadan. He was born in the house of Allah. He was struck in the house of Allah. And his soul departs during the blessed nights of Ramadan, the month of Allah. Subhanallah, every time I look around in the world, I see who can represent Islam as a guardian of Islam that Allah SWT has mentioned, who can be better than this man? After the Prophet, no one except Ali. As the poison is seeping into his body, he is given sound advices. Look, we are, we are, uh, we are vindictive people, but let's just take this advice as uh, Imam uh, Ibn Muljim hit him on Ali al Islam and he falls. Then Ibn Muljim is arrested and uh, the tie, his hand is very tight. And they brought him to the front and they were ready to trip him into pieces. But Imam al Islam said, No, don't do that. The Imam looks at him with the eyes of compassion and says to Ibn Muljim, Was I not kind to you? Was I not just to you? Is there anything I did that you found wrong? And Ibn Mujim couldn't answer. Then the Imam looks at his hands and says to the soldiers, Oh, he soldiers, loosen his hands. He's so tight, it's probably hurting him. Allahu Akbar. They say that they also brought milk for Imam Ali because uh, the poison was getting to such an extent that it was, it was almost taking over him. But subhanallah, think about this hatred of Ali, think. Ali took this milk and said, give it to Ilbi Muljim. Think about this, oh, you haters of Allah al Look at the greatness and the humility of these blessed people. Imam Ali al-Islam is such a man that used to feed the poor so much. And he looked so poor that even once a man went to his house to eat. And Imam Hassan al was there and so was Imam Hussein I was sitting around in the house. And this man kept taking food and kept putting it in his pocket. Imam Hassan al noticed this and said, Oh poor man, if you want more food, we shall give it to you. There's, there's no need for you to put it in the pocket. The poor man said, No, don't get me wrong, it's not for me, it's for someone else. Someone who's more poorer than me, a man outside. Imam Hassan al is asking, Who is this poor man? Where is he? And the poor man inside the house describes him and says, He is like this and this. Imam Hassan al Islam said, That poor man you speak of is none other than my father, Imam Ali. Look at the amount of humility and humbleness that he carried himself with. SubhanAllah, we need to practice this brothers and sisters. This is the quality of Imam Ali al-Islam. There is so much to say but my limited knowledge cannot do justice to the justice of Ali. I will just finish off with the, a short audio, uh, inshallah here, stating the status of Ali. Inshallah, please pay attention and uh, keep these wise words in your heart and practice them. If there was any mistake in my brief talk, uh, it's only due to my inaccuracies and only the greatness is due to Allah. And if anyone, uh, if I can bring any meaningful information, any light to anyone, then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. 
اوصبلہمن شیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہم صلی علی محمد و علی محمد لمتی ولا میتین وسلم تسلیما کثیرا و یعقوب المسلمین امیر المؤمنین اسد الله الغالب علی ابن ابی طالب is a truly unique character because he's the only person in history who's been able to combine and bring together all these antithetical qualities in the same human being. He is the one who is seen weeping and sobbing and crying in the middle of the night, calling out, مولاي مولاي أنت السيد وأنا العبد وَهَلْ يَرْحَمِ الْعَبْدُ إِلَّا الْسَيِّدِ In the famous supplication of Amir al-Mu'mineen, read it brothers and sisters. Read this supplication. You'll be reminded of just how great a personality Ali ibn Abi Talib was. These words are originating from the mouth of a man who is the bravest on the battlefield. Who is the most ferocious in the face of the enemies of God. Who is the greatest commander of any army. This is the same man who smashed open the gate of Khaybar single-handedly. Ali ibn Abi Talib is the one who does not tolerate oppression. Ali ibn Abi Talib who is so sensitive about the way the treasury is handled. Not a single dime is taken from it unjustly under his watchful eyes. We could go on and on for years and by God will never be able to do justice to the justice of Ali. Why is Ali ibn Abi Talib so special? Because he was the first to submit to the religion of Allah. Ali ibn Abi Talib was the first to come to Rasulullah whenever he needed help. He was always the first to respond to Rasulullah. Amir al-Mu'mineen was always the first to stand in the battlefield while everyone fleed for their lives. Ali ibn Abi Talib is this great man whose name we will call for our entire lives. When you want to get up, you say, Ya Ali. When you want to sit down, you say, Ya Ali. When you want to climb a, a bunch of stairs, you say, Ya Ali. When you want to help your kids ride a bicycle, you teach them to say, Ya Ali. When your mother is giving birth to you at the hospital, she calls out, Ya Ali, why? Because Rasulullah always called out, Ya Ali, Ya Ali, Ya Ali. Thank you.